Hey everyone, welcome back. I've gotten a few requests over the last couple of weeks to do some videos, particularly relating to voltage, like the voltages that are in your house. Now most of my videos deal with smaller things, like voltages from batteries, DC voltages, but in the field of automation, we also have to deal with a lot of higher voltages, AC, both single phase and three phase. So it seems like a nice segue to be able to talk about residential voltages. So let's go look at some single phase voltage and see how the voltage gets to your house. Later on, we'll cover in some other videos more about current and some of the resistance and loads of devices. But for this video, we're going to focus mostly on the voltage. So let's go check it out. So here we have the inside of a single phase service panel. Now, quick warning about these service panels uh, are very dangerous because they have higher voltages inside. A uh, single phase can have up to 240 volts and other panels can have much higher voltages. So you have to be extremely careful. I've taken the cover off of this one so you don't have to do that at home, uh, but there's no way we're gonna be sticking anything metal or conductive anywhere near these things. They can be very dangerous, so warning on those. But inside what you see is in the center, there's two copper bars running down the middle with the little tabs sticking out. Those tabs are what the breakers connect onto and those are the hot bars. Uh, we'll see that those the two hot wires come out of the transformer up on the pole. We'll see that in just a minute. Now over on the right side, we have the white wires which indicate the neutral. Now if a, if a single breaker at one side of the 240 volts is compared to the neutral, that gives us 120 volts. Now a double pole breaker will connect to both of the copper buses and provide us with 240 volts, twice as much. That's great for those power hungry devices. Over here on the other side, we have a set of bare copper wires, which are the ground wires. Uh, so inside a service panel, we have two hots, we have a neutral and we have a ground. Now the ground indicate goes down to the ground and uh, it literally connects to a giant bar of metal stabbed down into the ground. Uh, in other places, they call this earthing instead of just grounding, but we usually refer to it as earth ground, so it kind of does the same thing. Although the word ground sometimes gets kind of hazy because it means a lot of different things to different people. So up at the top, we have the place where our two hot wires come in to energize the two bars, so we could turn that off, but the, the electricity coming from the transformer at the pole is still there all the time, even if the breaker is turned off. So that's why we have to be careful and very cautious with these, because even if the breaker is turned off, there's still energy inside of this panel. Don't be fooled by the fact that a breaker is turned on or off. Uh, but it supplies energy to the two copper buses, and then the neutral on one side and the ground on the other side give us all the connections that we need to supply a grounded single phase, either 240 full voltage or 120 half wave voltage. So that's the inside of a single phase service panel. Now right behind me on this power pole, you can see a set of wires. Now there's two wires, the smaller wires, that are traveling back and forth and those go up and down the road. Now there's smaller wires um, because they're running at a much higher voltage. The relationship between voltage, current, and size of wire is something that we're going to talk about in another video, but it's just kind of an interesting thing to be aware of that the smaller wires are capable of a much higher voltage. Now you see the two larger sets of wires coming off of it, coming kind of down at an angle. Those are the service wires, the drop wires that are providing power to both the house and out to the shop and the barn. This, the little gray cylindrical thing that you see attached to the power pole is a transformer. Now the large, the small wires with the large voltage are traveling up and down the road. Those wires, both a hot and a neutral, are going into that transformer box and they're being lowered to a much lower voltage. In fact, the voltage that they're being lowered to is 240 volts. Now right in the center of that transformer is a wire coming out. They call that a center tap. That center tap is attached to ground down through the pole, and that becomes the neutral wire, which is attached to ground. Both sides of the hot wires coming out, both, both ends of the transformer at max provide 240 volts, but each one of them with respect to the neutral is only 120 volts. When we go back inside, I'll put this on a whiteboard and it'll make a lot more sense. So the transformer is what steps the voltage down, allowing the voltage to make it to your house and to whatever the end service panel is that we saw just a moment ago. The wires that go back and forth are the hot wire and the neutral wire. 
Uh, in this case, they have to be separated by a large distance. That depends on the amount of voltage because at a very high voltage, you can get a spark between them if they get too close together. So it's very important that they keep the wires a long distance apart for the high voltage. But when you see them coming down to your house at a lower voltage, they can be right next to each other uh, and you have a much reduced sparking ability because of the lowered voltage. All right, let's talk about that transformer thing. The transformer is two coils of wire that can change the level of voltage in an alternating current system, which actually the ability to put a transformer into the system is really why AC is the predominant way that we get voltage across the grid into our house anyway. Transformers are a really ingenious concept. Now here I have a model of a transformer. Uh, you see that it's got two sides. There's one side that's uh, got a whole bunch of small, tiny little wires that are wrapped a whole bunch of times. And then over on this side is a big fat wire that's wrapped not nearly as many times. The number of twists of wire on one side versus the other tells us how much the voltage is going to be increased or decreased. Remember how up on the pole, the high voltage wires were smaller, the low voltage wires were bigger. Well, this simulates, this tiny little wire simulates the high voltage side. This is the low voltage side. I know it seems kind of backwards because we think high voltage, tons of energy, must be bigger wires. Not necessarily the case. One side has a whole bunch of twists, the high voltage side. The low voltage side has much lower number of twists. Now this side just has two wires coming in and two wires coming out. This uh, is not capable of handling very much current at all. Uh, this transformer, ugh, this is a little bit bigger and uh, it's capable of handling about four amps. Your house probably has a 100 amp breaker in it. So just to give you kind of an idea of the size of the transformer inside that canister, it's huge and really heavy. Now the way the transformer works inside that, uh, inside that setup is we have two wires coming in and we'll call this our L and in. Sometimes they'll call the L the hot wire or the live wire or the line wire. And then the other side is the neutral. Remember the two wires that were above and below each other. Now coming out of the transformer, we'll call this L1 and L2. Those are the two sides of the transformer coming out, the two ends. And between those two is 240 volts. So if we were to use a voltmeter and check between those two, those were the two copper bars running down the middle of the panel it's 240 volts between them. Now in the middle, we call this our neutral. That was the white wire, that third wire that was coming in. That's why there's always three wires coming out of that transformer up on the pole out into your house. By the way, sometimes those are in green boxes. If it's an underground service to your house, the transformer is in a big green box outside. It's not always the overhead drop wires. But since we had 240 volts between these, we have 120 in between either side. That's where your lights and your outlets and most of the appliances in your house are powered by the alternating sides of one copper bus and the neutral versus the other copper bus and the neutral. Now, if we connected the double pole breaker to both of the copper buses in the middle, that's where we're gonna get that 240 volts for the bigger power hungrier devices. So that's basically how the transformer works to, uh, to interact the higher voltage side to the lower voltage side, but why we end up with only two wires running across, but we can still get three wires coming out of that drop wire into our service panel. And then that last connection to ground, which I forgot to show you, but it's just a big copper bar that sticks down into the ground. Uh, that one is the, uh, the grounding connection. That's our fourth wire in here. So two wires up on the poles running down the road, four total wires that are supplied inside the service panel. Uh, so it's a really ingenious way to be able to get the electricity, in this case, just the voltage, we'll talk about current later, uh, to get that to your house. So as you can see, electrical service into a house or into a building is a really fascinating subject. There's a lot more behind it, and this is only intended to scratch the surface of the complexity behind it. Uh, there's a lot of things that I just kind of had to oversimplify, and in future videos I hope to be able to explain a little bit more about the difference between single phase and three phase as well. Three phase is a lot more complicated subject and it's difficult to cover both of those in one video. But I hope you stay tuned uh, and, and watch some others. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, and if you have any questions, just let me know and I'd love to answer those. And as always, go build something awesome. Have a good day.